What's going on everyone? E-Man here from the C-List Villains Podcast and E-Man's World of Geek. Today we are in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center doing a little bit of an educational trip. That's right, the kids wanted to make sure that on the family vacation we got a little bit of education squeezed in and that's exactly what we did. We decided to come over here and take a look at all cool things, NASA, space, all the nerdy stuff that this place actually has to offer. And to be perfectly honest, Kennedy Space Center has to be one of my new favorite places to go visit. The center doesn't look like it has a lot of things, but inside a lot of these buildings, there was so many things to do. We got to learn a lot more about Mars. We got to learn a lot more about the Artemis space missions that are happening here in a few years. We went back and got to revisit what the Atlantis Space Shuttle did and the Space Shuttle program. This place is absolutely phenomenal. There's one place in Florida that I would highly recommend visiting. It is the Kennedy Space Center. There's so much, so many fun things to do out here. Why don't you guys come along for the ride? The gateway was one of the first buildings we entered and right away you can see the scale of this place. There are a few exhibits here like Boeing's Space Capsule, Lockheed Martin's interactive deep space habitat, to a VR station where it'll show you what a rocket launch looks like from inside the capsule. They even have the very first Falcon 9 rocket hanging from above, which was the rocket that helped shoot the infamous Elon Musk Tesla into space. We spent about an hour in this building marveling at what these space agencies are able to do for the exploration of space. After the gateway, we made our way to a VR game. Hyperdeck is a video game experience that they have here at the Kennedy Space Center. We're gonna end up putting up some uh, some VR goggles. We're gonna go collect rocks. Uh, I score away. We're gonna collect the rocks. We're gonna collect the rocks. We're gonna collect the rocks and save the moon. Save the moon. Save the moon. We're saving the moon. That's what we're gonna do. That was, that was super fun. It was just straight up like VR game. We were all out there shooting rocks. Um, apparently the kids were assisting us off the side. It was just totally worth it. It's free, so if you guys are ever at the Kennedy Space Center, come on over here and check this out. It was super, super fun. The kids did not assist us. They actually sorted us what? No, I so that we lost. I helped you guys. Oh, that's so mean, this kids. One. This one. This one. Oh. The bus tour is super, super cool. There's a little video that tells us about some of the launch pads and some of the things that are happening. Um, talking to us about the Artemis missions too. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what that is, but it seems like there's gonna be an Artemis one, two, and three. So it's gonna be a couple of test launches before they send people back to the moon. And, and that, that's the cool thing. So I think Artemis three is the mission where they actually send 
um, some humans back to the moon. And then that's kind of like the stepping point before we send people over to Mars. Man, this, this complex is freaking amazing. Can't wait to check out some more of it. Before SpaceX's Starship was built, the mighty Saturn V rocket at the Kennedy Space Center was the tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever flown. Primarily used during the Apollo program, NASA used the colossal Saturn V rockets to send Americans to the moon. There are only three Saturn V rockets on display in the world. The other two are at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Kennedy Space Center is the final home of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, which flew 33 missions, one of which was the final repair to the famous Hubble Space Telescope. Atlantis is displayed only as astronauts have seen her in space, rotated at about 43 degrees with the payload doors open and the canadarm extended, as if just unlocked from the International Space Station. Atlantis is only one of three shuttles on display around the world. The other two are the Endeavour at the California Science Center in Los Angeles and the Discovery at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. The Kennedy Space Center has become one of our favorite places to visit. It's only a five hour flight from the West Coast and an hour drive east of Orlando, Florida. This park is a childhood dream come true for many of us who've dreamt of being an astronaut. We spent two days here, which came out to $89 per adult and $79 per children, three to 11. Single day passes are $75 for adults and 65 for kids. There are add-on packages where you can have your own guided tour, or you can take that up a notch and have a real astronaut guide you through the park. With so many things to tinker with, see with your own eyes like the real launch pads current rockets are using, and visiting the rocket garden where rockets of the past are displayed, this is the space geek's dream come true. For those who've dreamt of going into space, want to see a rocket launch, or are curious as to what a real Mars and moon rock look like, the Kennedy Space Center is a must visit for the family. If you're ever in Florida, this is a stop you cannot miss. And if you're lucky enough, you may just catch a rocket launch or two. I don't see anything. It's launching, mommy, you see the fire. It's hey. launching! 
thing. Oh, that's the thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It looks like a sun going up in the air. It is extremely bright. It literally looks like the sun. It is some of the brightest things I've ever seen in my life. Oh, you guys don't. Yeah, you guys can't really. That is so sick. Look how it lights up the sky.